the La Aroma de Cuba Immensa. Hello everyone, welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing this 5.5 by 60 stick made by Ashton at the uh, Jose Pepin Garcia My Family Cigar uh, Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. This is a Connecticut broadleaf wrapped cigar with Nicaraguan long fillers. Retails for about six dollars and fifty-five cents before tax and all that mumbo jumbo. It's a very stout stick. It's it's hefty. It's got a good weight to it. Quite firm. Has a some small veins for the most part, but there are a couple larger veins in there. Uh, very visible seams, however, they seem to be attached well. And a... looks like a triple cap. Feels like dry, unpolished leather. It's kind of uneven colored. There's uh, dark and light browns kind of modeled in there back and forth. Okay, whatever. Smells of sweet tobacco on the wrapper. That's about all I'm getting. The nose smells like cocoa. Like a like a chocolate cake almost. I guess that would be a cross between a cocoa and bread dough makes it that kind of a chocolate cake kind of character. Definitely some some spices, I can feel it tingling the nose. Okay. There is a cloth footband that I will remove. I'll simply give it a little pull. It's loose enough, I can just pull it right off of there. All right. my Zycar today. Now, this is going to go off camera here. Show you a little trick. When using a guillotine cutter, set it down on something. I'm going to use my scoring sheet. Have it on a little clipboard here. Just lay it flat. Place the cigar down inside until it touches the bottom. And give it a quick snip and theoretically that should be a perfect cut each and every time theoretically of course mm. you can see it's you know good cut but the draw is quite snug and it doesn't surprise me because this is a very firm pack some leather Some kitchen spices in there. A little bit of that cocoa in the back. Kind of on the finish. You have to really look for that cocoa. Okay. Starting off nicely. Promises to be a rather nice cigar. Zycar double flame torch lighter. There we have it. Okay, right off the bat, smoke's kind of dry. Here comes that blast of pepper, rear rear of the palate, really ramping up, becoming quite strong, starting to move forward. My lips are starting to feel that blast of pepper now. Okay, 
guys. Pepper's mellowing down a little bit now. Ooh. Retro Hale's got that really up front blast of pepper once again. Okay. So uh, there's pepper, pepper, and more spicy pepper. So we'll let this heat up a little bit, and I'll come back somewhere in the first third. See you in a little bit. I'm pairing today's cigar with Old Pulteney Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged 12 years. Pour myself a little dram. I love the shape of this bottle. Now they say it's supposed to be designed to remind you of a traditional pot still. And yeah, I can see that, but also reminds me quite a bit of a Glencairn glass. Anywho, that's my little two cents. 43% uh, alcohol by volume. Uh, the little blurb says robust with a delicate hint of sea air. Produced by distillery manager Malcolm. Little signature on there. Malcolm Waring? Waring, maybe? Anyway. And then it has a little description about uh, the Pulteney Distillery uh, in Wick is the most northerly distillery on the Scottish mainland. And then they say a few other things about it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. There's some citrusy notes in there. Smell a little bit of peat in there as well. Very subtle on the peat. A little bit of leather. I can taste the oak. Not, not in a vanilla-y sort of way, but the oak itself. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and put oh, about a teaspoon of water in the dram. Do a little swirl. Put my lid on it. Let it sit for a bit. We'll get back to cigar review. See you in a bit. Here I'm just about 40 minutes in. I had uh, about an inch and a quarter worth of ash and it dropped off. The ash is real loose and flaky. Didn't surprise me. I was hoping to be able to tap it off in the ashtray, but it fell off before I got to that point. The first third of the cigar didn't have a whole lot going on. Um, there was some subtle meatiness. All the flavors were really pretty subtle. It had some subtle meatiness. Uh, a slight hint of some, almost a musty, earthy, kind of like a, a rotting, damp log. You know, not in a bad way, but um, yeah, that's the best way I could think to describe it. Musty earth, like a damp log out in the woods. The smoke's kind of thin. Not a whole lot going on with it. But uh, I'll come back somewhere in the second, third. See you in a bit. What of the old Pulteney? I have to agree with my friend Ralphie at Ralphie.com. This is definitely a whiskey that you have to really take your time with. Not so much that it's a real delicate whiskey. By no means. I mean, it's it's got a bit of a bit of a kick to it, but it's delicate in that. This is a whiskey that you don't want to chug down a dram in you know 20 minutes or 10 minutes. You want to sit down and relax, reflect on the day, really 
really pay attention to the whiskey. Nose it a lot. Look at it. Beautiful whiskey. There's a lot going on with this whiskey. This is definitely not for beginners. I'm, uh, I'm not a beginner, but I'm far from an expert. Uh, there's just so much going on with this that I, I don't have the experienced palate that Ralphie does, but uh, I'm definitely picking up a lot of the citrus, a little bit of that leather, a little bit of a uh, very, very small hint of peat. But uh, yeah, an experienced Scotch whiskey drinker would probably pick up even more than that. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a whiskey to sit down and relax, take your time with. Don't rush the day at all. Just enjoy it. Lovely stuff. Let's get back to the cigar review. Alright, I'm just about an hour in. Second, third. I have probably an inch of ash. This car is burning nice and slow. Really just about the pace I like it. For, for this size cigar, this is about what I would expect. Now, I bought this cigar... When did I buy this? About a week ago, I think it was. I think it was a week ago. And I kept it in the little plastic Ziploc type bag that my tobacconist uh, puts them in. I, I bought, I don't know, four or five cigars and put them all in a little bag and uh, I put a little Bovita or Bovita, however you have Bovita, I guess, packet in there with it and uh, I put it in a I didn't put it in my humidor uh, I put it in a cigar box sealed in a Ziploc with the Bovita packet. Now it could be that I've got a little bit too much moisture from being sealed with the Bovida for a week. Um, it's it's burning nice and f fairly even, not perfect, but uh, I'm not having any flaws with the burn. I haven't had to touch it up or anything, but I'm um, I'm thinking that maybe it's a little too damp, and that's why the smoke is a little thin. Um, I don't know. It's the first time I've stored a cigar in this manner. It's kind of experimenting. The cigar is kind of one-dimensional. Not getting a whole lot of changes. That initial blast of pepper when I first lit the cigar, completely gone. It, it died off once I got about an inch into the cigar. Smoke's a little dry. Um, not getting a whole lot of flavors. Uh, a little bit of that uh, kind of musty earth. Um, if I really look for it, I can maybe find a little bit of, uh, of some real subtle leather and... Uh, Occasionally, I'll pick up a little bit of that meatiness, almost like a... Sometimes it seems to me like a little bit of a grilled meat, but just real subtle, and you really have to look for these flavors. Mild to maybe mild medium in strength. Just now starting to pick up ever so slight hint of cedar. And it's not a whole lot going on. That that cedar character, I think, is uh, adding to the dryness of the cigar. It's not a sweet cedar. It's a, it's a very dry cedar. Draw is still pretty snug. 
little tighter than I like. No complaints, just uh, not a whole lot going on. Um, I, I personally like more forward, richer flavors, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Some cigars have it, some don't. I think it's going rather well with my old Pulteney. They're complementing each other nicely. I'll continue on. I'll come back in the final third. Alright, I'm not quite an hour and 20 minutes in. So you can see the wrapper is splitting. In the final third, not a whole lot of changes. Um, smoke's still pretty dry. Getting a little bit of that cedar spice. Real subtle. The leather is pretty much gone. That musty earth, if I really look long and hard, I can pick a little bit of that up. A little bit of spiciness. Real dry smoke, real dry. I'll go ahead and end this review here. I will continue on into the nub uh, unless I pick up some real definitive changes. This will be it. But I'll continue to smoke it. Would I recommend the cigar to? I guess I could recommend this to a novice, uh, being that it's a mild, maybe mild to medium in strength, so it wouldn't put off somebody that's just starting out. However, if you're looking for some real forward flavors, something real tasty, you're not going to find that in this cigar. It's not bad, but it's just not real flavorful. The burn, um, the final third I've started to have some issues. I did touch it up once. And you can see it's starting to burn unevenly again. Uh, I had a portion of it that wasn't burning at all, so I did touch it up. Um, and then shortly thereafter, the wrapper split. I'm going to end this review. Thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. I'll catch you next time. I wanted to show you my view from my rocking chair here. I'm sitting here next to a fire going in the fireplace. And when I sit in my rocking chair, I'm facing directly out that way. Love this time of year. This is first week of November sunny and today it was about 60 degrees even up on top of the mountain it's supposed to be uh, closer to 70 tomorrow i think they were saying 68 partly cloudy you see i got the mountains in the background great place to sit on a beautiful fall day now in the summer i can't see those mountains with all the leaves on the trees so i'm really thankful for the nice weather this time of year that's all i gotta say